Thank you all. It is uh, 4.09 on May 4th, 2020. This is for the Volunteer Firefighters Pension Committee. Uh, based off of who's on the line, we do have a quorum, so I will call the meeting to order. First item on the agenda is a consideration of minutes from the February 3rd meeting. Can I get a motion? Motion to accept as printed. And a second? Second, Harry. Any discussion on the item? Seeing none, all in favor of accepting the minutes? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstain. Excellent. And I believe we're all accepted. Item three on the agenda, report of the investment management consultant, Chris. Chris, if you're still there, I can scroll through just like last time, just point me in a direction. No, I am, thank you, Gary. And if, if it pleases the chair, I, I wasn't sure, Mike, it looks like you may have pulled a couple of the pages just to show the fiscal year number. Was that by design, maybe? In, yes, in front we, of we, we've got some action that we have to take on that, Chris. Do you, do you want me to uh, skip ahead of that and go right to the yeah. report? Or? Yeah, go to your full report. Okay. So if we could, Gary, I am all the way scrolling down um, in our, the body of our report, the firm update page, page three. Same thing I think we just did with the um, okay. yep. OPED folks, just a, a 30 second update and sound bite for the committee. Um, as a reminder, uh, uh, as we had indicated and, and noticed to you back in January, we have consummated the merger with uh, our peer firm in Chicago, the Mayo Schneider and Associates. Um, certainly a big motivation for that was to increase resources and scale. And we do that on the manager front and technology and infrastructure fronts. And um, as you can see, we'll be truly a nationwide effort with, with about $200 billion of assets uh, under advisement and good representation um, uh, on the executive front. We will certainly integrate the two firms very thoughtfully as mentioned at the bottom of that same page. So uh, you should not intend or expect to see any material changes. Anything we will bring would be kind of best thinking of the combined firms and done in a very gradual uh, manner. Um, uh, so really no changes day to day. I continue to be your consultant and the service team in Windsor is, is, is unaffected as well. Um, and you know we're obviously excited on, on a whole host of fronts, and most notably, just DeMeo thinks like we do. Uh, very transparent solutions for clients, and um, putting your interests first. So it was a natural combination. Um, page five, uh, I think, as everyone well knows, it was some awful tough sledding in the first quarter of of uh, 2020. Um, we don't need to get into too much in the way of details on, on what precipitated the uh, noise in the financial markets. You all well know that uh, the health crisis has uh, put us into a recession. Uh, as indicated in the upper left-hand corner of the page, and we certainly don't know with absolute definition, but we are hopeful and maybe optimistic that we'll begin to stabilize and emerge economically in the back half of the year. Um, but nonetheless, you do see there the re-rating in, in, in equities in the first quarter, in the upper right-hand corner of the page. Um, a pretty dramatic downturn, and as mentioned there, as you can see, uh, a bear market 20% decline from the peak in, in 16 trading days, the fastest on record by a long shot. That typically takes north of three months for that to happen historically. So you see how dramatic the downturn was, particularly in the month of March. And then moreover, on the bottom half of the same page, you do see there the magnitude of the response um, from the government, both the form of the CARES Act uh, and some of the follow-on legislation to try to support various aspects of the economy and paired with what you know is going on with the Federal Reserve um, St. Patrick's Day, they cut interest rates on a Sunday to the uh, and did that in an unprecedented fashion. And they've been uh, offering up uh, 
lots in the way of um, uh, liquidity facilities and, and programs really to try to, to support the markets and, and the economy as best they can. And they've both repeatedly said that uh, you know, there's no bounds to which they'll go uh, to continue to offer stimulus. So um, some of that stimulus is probably setting the stage for what has been somewhat better markets in the month of April. Uh, and we'll talk to those, a couple of those numbers in a minute. Um, before we do so, if you scroll ahead to page six, you will see um, really how dramatic the downdraft was in the quarter. And as you can indicate, or see there rather on the top half of the page, uh, certainly there was nowhere to hide on global equity with um, pretty material negative results there, as you can see, right? Uh, large cap growth stocks in the U.S., the best relative performer, and they were down a full 14%. So you can see there, uh, it was really tough sledding in, in that first quarter. There were um, portions of the bond markets and lower down in that exhibit that did okay, most notably some of the government and treasury areas of the markets. Generally, the managers that we have in the program and the former Prudential and BlackRock have not found value in government bonds. So that, as we'll see in a minute, was a headwind in the quarter for them, although they've since both recovered a good deal in the month of April. Um, and just to tie that in a little bit, while you don't see it on the page here to give you a little perspective, uh, the S&P in April was up close to 13%. Uh, small cap stocks in the U.S. were up almost 14 percent. International stocks up seven and a half percent or thereabouts. So you have seen a good deal of recovery in the month of April. Um, but, but no getting away or escaping the fact that it was a very, very difficult uh, Q1 for investing. Um, with that, I'm going to scroll all the way ahead if I could in that same deck. Uh, Gary, maybe we'll just isolate again a page. 10, uh, just so folks can see it again, we talked about this regularly, right? We talk about it all the time and that's the importance of staying fully invested in markets and, 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 and not letting, um, you know, your, your kind of, you know, worst aspects of our personalities kind of getting in the way because if you try to time things, you're, you're bound to fail. And this exhibit here just shows you that the importance of being invested. Um, and you don't have to miss very many good days to have your returns really start to uh, deteriorate. Um, and it was interesting to us to note, if you scroll further down that page, you'll see in the month of March alone, actually, um, within all that noise and chaos uh, in the month of March, there were actually some fairly significant updates tucked in there. Uh, most notably, look at the, the 24th of March when the world was seemingly coming to an end. You may remember the S&P was up close to 10%. So you got to stay invested. You got to stay disciplined. I know with this group, we don't have to worry about that. You've always had that mentality, but a good reminder for us um, nonetheless. And then one last visual before we look at the portfolio on page 12, uh, a little bit more in the way of... Um, how dramatic and frantic the decline was in February and March. The top half of the page there, you can see previous bear markets, if you will, and kind of using, uh, extending their duration over the horizontal axis. And obviously the vertical axis is the price decline. If you can make it out way over in the left-hand corner of the exhibit, you'll see the February 20 reference, uh, the green line, and you can see how sharp that drop was and how truncated it was as well, right? It happened very, very quickly, um, as quickly as it's ever happened, obviously. So it was um, really unusual operating circumstances in the markets. Um, we do have big downdrafts through time, right? That's kind of one of the banes of investing. It does happen. Uh, and if you go back through time, we highlight on the bottom half of that same page, uh, five or six previous examples of, of big declines in markets, and then inevitably their ability to begin to march back and recover, uh, again, with the benefit of being a little bit patient. You see that in the right-hand side of the page. So markets do come back. Um, as I mentioned, in April, we've had some pretty good returns. We'll see if it's sustainable or not. 
um, but it does kind of it does kind of remind us of, of of just being patient and kind of disciplined with our programs. Um, with that, if you turn and scroll ahead uh, to page fourteen, you'll see the portfolio at the end of March. Uh, so you do see there the portfolio value just shy of a $1.5 million. I think as I looked Thursday night, it's creeping up to about $1.6 million when I last looked. Um, you see that the portfolio is generally aligned with Target. We did work with Mike O'Neill in uh, the kind of throes of the crisis to do some very selective thought rebalancing back into the Target's. I think at the time we took about $30,000 out of fixed income and redeployed that into equities um, to bring us back towards those st uh, strategic target weights that you have there. So that's what you see in, in March here. Um, we did do a little bit of that under the hood, but there's no escaping the fact as you'll see here. Um, I can think of two other occasions, the 08, 09 financial crisis in the fourth quarter of 2018 when we had really difficult operating environments and, and there really wasn't this quarter anywhere to hide. Uh, and you do see pretty acutely at age 15, um, uh, a really difficult return for the managers in the quarter. So you see that the program was down about a little over 8% versus the benchmark that was down three-ish and change. Uh, and really that came out of, as I alluded to earlier, the results of both Prudential uh, Total Return and the BlackRock uh, Strategic Income Product. Both, as I mentioned, historically have harvest returns in areas of the markets, not government bond, not treasury bond. That has been a winning hand for a long, long time. I suspect it'll continue to be a winning hand going forward. But in the month of March, it absolutely was not, as you can see. So it's a frustrating result for us. Uh, but given the operating circumstances and the backdrop, not one that's entirely unanticipated, I think we do take some comfort in the month of April uh, that the managers have stabilized pretty meaningfully. So I, I think we're going to get back on track here as things hopefully continue to settle down. Um, so while the numbers are not where we expect them or need them or want them to be in the quarter. I think as we've known in the past, when we've worked our way through these situations, the managers inevitably have kind of bubbled back up and been sources of incremental return. We're confident they will be again. So we don't have any changes um, uh, recommended or recommendations rather for the committee this afternoon. Uh, but again, we're certainly mindful and appreciative of, of a very difficult quarter. But again, aware longer term that there's a program that uh, um, in the vast majority of environments has been, has been one that's functioned pretty successfully and the managers have done good work. So I think we're gonna give them the benefit of that doubt once again, like we've done a couple times in the past. But let me pause there and see if there's questions or thoughts or comments or concerns from the committee. Uh, Chris, this is Jim Shigru. Can you hear me all right? You can, Jim. Uh, question about BlackRock. Uh, we changed over to BlackRock from, or changed half of our largest percent to BlackRock. Did that, in your opinion, or as an overview, help us this past, because the other was were going down, that was sort of a protection against that? Yeah, you know, it's a great question, Jim. So I just as a reminder to the committee, right, that the, the BlackRock strategy, the, the folks there have a bigger toolbox to operate with. Um, and they can um, run, uh, you know, with a kind of a, a whole host and variety of different strategies that can look very different in the benchmark. Um, I don't know if the first quarter really is a, is a, a good representation of where they're looking to add value longer term. So the, the, the blunt answer to your question, Jim, is that uh, in the first quarter, BlackRock did not hold up better than Prudential. Prudential did a little bit better. Um, we have, remember, the tips in there as well, and they did hold up materially better than the other two managers did. Um, I think over time, 
right, our motivation to pair BlackRock with Prudential was that they have um, kind of very complementary approaches in that the different environments is when they kind of tend to do better. So BlackRock will do better when interest rates are starting to move higher. Uh, Prudential will probably do better in a falling rate, in a flat rate environment. Um, they're both good, capable managers, and I would kind of, you know, tell you a little bit uh, sheepishly that I think the first quarter was just so unusual, March in particular, that it's probably not a very a good period to draw any longer term assessments, right, as to either the manager's kind of uh, 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 potential or where their prowess is, if you will, because it was so unusual. We had lots of stories from bond managers in the middle and the second half of March, where they literally could not trade bonds, where liquidity had dried up so severely that there was just no activity whatsoever in the bond markets. And that is, you know, a really unusual circumstance and, and one that's probably not going to do well for any active bond manager. Um, I still think the pairing makes eminent sense longer term. Uh, so I wouldn't make any changes there just yet, but a long-winded response. But the short answer is no. BlackRock in the first quarter, um, by virtue of some of their holdings, did a little bit more poorly than Prudential did. Okay, thank you. Hey, Chris. Yes, Mike. It's, it's Mike. Um, I've been hearing, you know, a little bit about concerns with uh, inflation because of everything the Fed's been doing. Can you just comment on, you know, what your, what your take is on the next, you know, several months or years as far as that goes? Yeah, so there has been, if you remember, um, maybe not, uh, but, but there's, there, there was back in the financial crisis, there was a lot of talk, if you remember at the time, there was a lot of government stimulus that was injected into the system. Uh, and at that time as well, there was a lot of concern from investors in the markets that all of that activity would ultimately uh, incite, you know, outsized and amounts of inflation. Um, in fact, if you remember, it never really did take hold for a whole host of reasons. But now we're seeing uh, today uh, that argument start to bubble up again. And I think where people are kind of drawing more concern around inflation than they did even in 08 and 09 is that the magnitude uh, and the speed with which that the authorities have brought stimulus uh, is, is exponentially higher than it was even in the financial crisis, right? So again, we're operating in kind of this unchartered territory where I think globally, last time we looked, if you added up all the various stimulus programs around the world, it's somewhere north of $16 trillion with a T, $16 trillion of stimulus. Um, I don't think, Mike, there's a great or particularly accurate playbook for that. But certainly the idea that inflation could begin to tick up once the economy settles down longer term and hopefully begins to grow again is something to be mindful of. Your bond managers, right, are certainly mindful of that. We've got the hips position in the program, which will offer up some protection in an inflationary environment as well. So I think we've got that ability to lead into that protection a little bit as circumstances warrant. Um, and it's something that we're kind of keeping tabs on. I don't think it happens any time in the next few months, but it could in the intermediate time horizon. And that's something we'll, uh, we'll be prepared to talk more on. Thank you. Chris, one last question. Uh, I, I, noticed, I know we all did poorly on the stock market over the first, the first quarter, but I, it seems to me as though we didn't do as badly as a lot of other people. Did. Uh, I don't know if you can compare the two or I, I'm just not looking for a long answer. Just it seems as so percentage wise, when I did the percentage of it, it seemed that we weren't quite as bad as we could have been. 
Yeah, well, no. I mean, you're and certainly in an absolute return sense, Jim, you're not, right? So, I mean, a, a, a typical balanced portfolio in the quarter that kind of leans into equities. Um, and uh, for some of you, we'll, we'll talk about this with the larger town plan in a little bit. Um, you know, returns, we saw returns down in the 15, 16, 17, 18 percent range, depending on the allocation. Um, your portfolio, as you know, is more conservatively positioned than that um, and leans into fixed income much more heavily than a lot of the, the, the bigger, large legacy pension plans do. The short answer is, again, you're right. Your intuition is right. You're certainly down in an absolute sense a lot less than, than many pension plans. In fairness, you do have right a, a, a much more conservative allocation. Um, so that would be the expected outcome. Um, but yeah, you're right. Uh, uh, you, you are uh, you know, probably down about half of what we saw a lot of typical pension plans down in the quarter that have to invest a little bit more aggressively. Thank you, Chris. All right, any other questions for Chris? Okay, seeing none, item four, report of plan custodian from Prudential, Lisa Wozeka. Great, thank you, Gary. Um, I don't know if you're gonna go into my report, but it's probably about halfway through, it's all, all the way at the end. Um, quiet quarter um, in terms of activity in the plan, not necessarily the markets as Chris just shared, but when Gary gets there, we will see that the total balance in the firefighters plan as of 331 was 1.491 million. Um, I'm happy to report that as of today, um, opening bell, not closing bell, I don't have that balance yet, the plan was up to 1.55 million. So we had a good April. Um, let's try to see yeah. where you are on here. Gary. It's pretty far down. It's, not even sure. I might still be in Chris's. So You are. Yep. I can tell you, um, let me get the page number. Oh, uh, it's like on slide 55-ish. There we go. We're getting there. Okay. Five. Yeah. Keep going one more if you can. Oh, sorry. One more. That's the town plan. There we go. Firefighters. Perfect. Okay. Thanks, Gary. So as I mentioned, we ended the first quarter with 1.491 million and uh, opening bell this morning, you were at 1.552. So April was a, was a kind month in the market for, for a lot of accounts. This one, um, notwithstanding. Um, you can also see that you were, you know, the highest balance that you have in the fund, as Chris mentioned earlier, is the core plus bond prudential fund. Um, if you'd like to go to the next slide, Gary, thank you. We'll show you the receipts and disbursements that occurred during the quarter. And I'm looking at that second row there. There were no uh, deposits or receipts made into the plan, but we did have one uh, payment made out, one of six yearly payments in the amount of $4,821. Mike did make reference to that in the notes on the cover page. Otherwise, it was, you know, it was a very quiet quarter other than the market itself. And Gary, one more slide shows last year compared to this year. And I am happy to report that um, we ended the first quarter 2019 at 1.534 million. And April really brought us back, as I mentioned earlier, we're at 1.552 million. So you, know, you lost what you made last year, but at least we're back where we were for now. So hopefully we'll continue to see gains. Really not too much activity um, in this plan. Are there any questions? No, Lisa, that seems like a good report. It's good that we're back to at least where we started. Right. I agree, Jim. That's all, right. all I have, Gary. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, item five, review of approved distributions made in the first quarter. Uh, item A, David C. Anderson. Mike, is there any in, additional information or is this 
No, no action required, Gary. That's just re reporting for the committee's information. Mike, I have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, you're taking six yearly payments. Uh, the plan says you can take it uh, once a year in bulk payment, transfer it to a CD of your own, or at least an IRA of your own. Uh, but suddenly people are taking years that they choose. He chose six years and we okayed it. Is that why are we suddenly not following the general uh, statutes in the plan that give time payments that they can give it rather than everybody making up their own plan? Yeah, Jim, I don't recall how we got started. It may have been before my time here in accommodating those requests. Um, but what we have done, we've always sort of gauged, you know, the, the level of administration for my staff to accommodate that. And we've, we've managed to do it. You know, that's, and that's, that's the, that's the reason why, because we, we have several other people who've asked to do that. Um, you know, we always, I guess we run the risk of, you know, winding up with, with an administrative, you know, uh, administrative effort that's beyond what we want, but we just, the reality is, you know, we, we were able to do it. And, and that's why it's, it's, I don't, and again, I don't know when it started, but we did start doing that at some point, several years in the past, and we continue to accommodate those requests. And okay, I believe- I just want to make sure that I know when I talk to him that I can tell him that they had to take it for five years and then he went down and got it for six, but it, it's okay with me what they take it at. It doesn't matter to the fire department. It's just your office is going to take on a problem if everybody decides on their own plan. Right. So that's something we'll continue to watch, Jim. And like I said, it's, it's, it's always been manageable and we've been, um, you know, we've been happy to kind of accommodate what the department members would like on that front. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay, uh, item six, any old business? No. Yes, I have uh, one. The uh, committee voted last uh, meeting last three months ago, I guess it was, uh, to recommend to the council that the, the, that the payment at the end of uh, a good year would be $750 uh, as opposed to the $500 it is now. Uh, where does that stand as of this time since we're going to be giving money out shortly? Yep. So we're in the middle of budget. Um, COVID has kind of wreaked havoc on operations from this level and conversations with council. Um, I need to wait to get through the budget process. We're looking at real considerations and concerns in terms of what we have for available revenue um, going forward as we're in the middle of a pandemic and we're very much concerned with the number of people who are um, faced with uh, financial restrictions. Um, however, uh, because of the limited impact of this dollar amount, um, you know, we'll, we'll circle back and have that conversation with the council. Um, but right now I'm trying to get through the budget. And let me just add to that, um, Jim that we did in the proposed budget, which is before the council now, uh, we did uh, the town manager's budget included 35, a $35,000 contribution uh, from the town to the plan, which would, which is enough to, to cover this increase. Oh, that's good to hear. Uh, so we're not- I know you got it. I know you got a copy of it, Mike. I don't know if the town manager has uh, got it or whether Gary got it or not, but there were 45 members make the pension, our Goodyear pension amounts as opposed to 51, 52 last year and 65 the year before. So there is a problem 
with firefighters, uh, as we all know, of course you hear the sirens now with all the parades they're having, but uh, it's it's something to consider uh, in all of your uh, all the other things you got to consider with the no COVID going around. Yeah, and I've I've definitely you know I've brought up before that the cost to have a paid fire department is obviously a lot more than a volunteer. Um, so it's, you know, we have to keep those numbers up in order to be able to respond to emergencies and fires. So, um, you know, the, the investment in terms of the grand scheme of things is minimal, um, but again, necessary to have the conversation at the council level with the budget as a whole. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for your patience. Any other old business? Nope. Okay. Seeing none, any new business? Uh, I have some, Gary, which I apologize because I typically uh, list this matter as a separate agenda item and just failed to do that. Um, the annual earnings credit for planned participants is something that we deal with each year at this meeting. Um, I'll just kind of, Tom, for your sake, go through the, the, there's a provision in the plan for uh, allocating each year's investment income to qualifying uh, participants in the plan. Um, that's, in section, that's in section five of the, of the plan document. And the provision is for uh, annual income to be measured for the year ended uh, March 31st. So that's why we do it at the May meeting every year is because we have that report from Chris. Um, so I had included uh, earlier in the agenda package just uh, two pages from Chris's report, uh, which showed that the annual income for the year ended March 31st was negative 1.6%. And under uh, the plan provisions in section 5.3, there's a floor for the allocation of 2%. So what we will do is allocate uh, 2% from the unallocated balance in the plan to each of the uh, the qualifying uh, participants. Which are, that was the number that Jim mentioned, the 45 members. We received that list of 45 members uh, from Jim, and then they'll each have a 2% added to their balance um, from their from their current balance of, you know, 2% of their current balance from annual income and the unallocated uh balance in the account in the fund. So that doesn't, re Jerry, Gary, that doesn't require any action by the committee, um, just reporting that, but that's that's something that we do each year. I know, and it's recorded for the record. Okay. Yeah. Any other new business? Excellent. Uh, with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved, Harry. I was going to say, no, no one wants to adjourn. Everybody just wants to hang out. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Everyone be safe and healthy, please. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Gary, Gary and Mike, yep. do we disconnect and dial into the next since it's a separate meeting? Yes. Yep. Yep, this will end this one. So, Harry, you'll dial in as well, right? Yes, about uh, 445. Yeah, using that other number. Yes, I understand. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye now. Stay Bye well. Now. Let's see here.